Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about some important matrix decompositions. And in today's part 46, we will continue our discussion about the Schur decomposition, which transforms any complex square matrix into an upper triangular form. And indeed, I want to show you the whole algorithm with an explicit example. However, as always, before we start with the calculations, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And moreover, as you might already know, you can download the additional material with the link in the description. There you find PDF versions, quizzes and exercises, which might help you to learn the topics we discuss here. Okay, then without further ado, let's start with our example of the Schur decomposition. And what we take is just a 3 times 3 matrix A with real entries. More precisely, the first column has minus 3, 4 and 3, and the second column minus 4, 5 and 5. And finally, the last one is 0, 0, 1. And if we see this as a complex valued matrix, we already know that a sure decomposition exists. This means that we find a transformation matrix which is unitary and brings A into upper triangular form. And the common name for the unitary involved is obviously U. And you know the best thing about a unitary matrix is that the inverse is quite simple, it's just given by the adjoint. Which implies that the similarity relation just treats U star times A times U. And then what we want to get out here is an upper triangular matrix. So the entries below the diagonal are just zero. And moreover, since similar matrices have the same eigenvalues, we already know that on the diagonal we find the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Indeed, we will see that in the algorithm which always works and what comes out is what we usually call a sure normal form. So you see, it can be different than the Jordan normal form, but also here, in the best case scenario, we have a diagonal matrix. Indeed, these are really important cases, but we will discuss them in the next video. Here, we just start with the algorithm. In the first step, we just fix an eigenvalue and an eigenvector of our matrix A. And in fact, it's really easy to see if we apply the vector 0, 0, 1 to the matrix A, then we get out the third column, which is the same vector. Which means it's an eigenvector associated to the eigenvalue 1. So let's call the eigenvalue lambda 1 and the eigenvector x1. And here it's important that we normalize the eigenvector such that it has length 1. This is already the case here. And then in the next step, we extend it to an O and B of C3 which means we have to choose some suitable vectors y2 and y3, which are mutual orthogonal and also normalized. We definitely have some freedom for that, but you already see the canonical unit vectors are the easiest choice. Hence, y2 could be 1, 0, 0, and y3, 0, 1, 0. And there we immediately see this is a well-defined O and B. And this O and B we can now put into the columns of a matrix, which means we get a unitary matrix. And this will be our first unitary matrix, so we call it U1. So it's quite simple, we have a matrix with a lot of zeros and ones. And the inverse of this matrix is given by the adjoint, which is also easy to calculate. It's transposing and complex conjugation, where the complex conjugation is not needed here. And now the algorithm just tells us to apply these two matrices to the given matrix A. Therefore, now the actual calculation starts. It's not complicated at all, because it's just a matrix product, and maybe let's start with the first two factors. In the first column here we get 3, minus 3 and 4. Second column is 5, minus 4 and 5. And the last column does not change, we just have 1, 0, 0. And then we multiply it with u1, which is also not a problem at all. Indeed, in the first multiplication here, we just had a permutation of the rows, and now we get a permutation of the columns. But no matter how you see it, it stays a simple calculation. And with that last calculation here, 
the first step in our algorithm is done. And what you should see is that we are closer to the upper triangular form. Indeed, we have reduced everything and now we have a 2 times 2 case. More precisely, in the right bottom corner, we find our new matrix A2. And in the top left corner, we should have our eigenvalue lambda 1. Indeed, we have proven that yesterday, if there was something different there, we would have made a mistake. So there we go, now we can repeat the whole calculation again for the matrix A2. So let's say, now we go to the second step in the calculation. So now we have to find an eigenvalue of A2, which is not so complicated because it's just a 2 times 2 matrix. And moreover, you might already see that the numbers fit together and you can just multiply with the vector 1 and minus 1. In fact, we get the same vector out again, which means we have the eigenvalue 1 again. And now we call this eigenvalue lambda 2 and we have to normalize our eigenvector. This means x2 is given as 1 divided by the square root of 2 times the vector 1 minus 1. So this vector has length 1 and as before we want to extend it to a whole O and B of C2. So we have to choose a different vector which we call y3 which also has length 1 and is orthogonal to x2. This is quite simple in two dimensions because we just have to rotate this given vector. Hence we can take the vector 1, 1. Obviously orthogonal to x2 and also with length 1. And now as before we put this into a matrix U2 and also calculate the adjoint. And obviously we can just pull out the factor 1 over the square root of 2. And then we have our two matrices which we have to combine with the matrix A2 to get out a triangular matrix. Indeed this is already the last step in the algorithm because afterwards we have reached a 1 times 1 matrix. Hence we just have to multiply these three matrices here and then we are done. And maybe the first thing we can do here is to put the two factors together which means we get one half. And then maybe let's do the matrix multiplication on the right which means A2 times this matrix. Not so complicated, first we get plus 1 and minus 1 and in the second column minus 7 and 9. And then we just have one matrix multiplication left which is also not complicated. Indeed, there we get 1, minus 8 and 1 in the corner here. And as you can see, we have the same thing as before, namely the eigenvalue 1 in the top left corner and a new matrix here. This one is what we would call A3, but we don't have to do anything with it anymore. So the algorithm ends because we have reached the 1 times 1 case. Therefore, the only thing that remains to do now is to put all the steps together to get our unitary matrix U. It's not complicated at all because it's just multiplying two matrices. More concretely, we have U defined as the multiplication of U1 with the block matrix 1, U2. So you see, we have two 3 times 3 matrices in the matrix product. And of course, we can just copy them from above, so we don't need to do much. The only issue might be that the square root of 2 is involved here, but otherwise we don't have any problems at all. In this case it's just exchanging rows again, so we get this as the result for our unitary matrix U. Moreover, we also already know how our sure normal form R should look like, because we know all the eigenvalues. Indeed we only have the eigenvalue 1, so we find 1 3 times on the diagonal. And in addition there is something above the diagonal, but below the diagonal we find only zeros. Now if you want you can check with the characteristic polynomial that 1 is the only eigenvalue of A indeed. In addition we can also explicitly calculate R because we just have to multiply with our unitary matrix U. In other words we do exactly what we have stated at the beginning, namely U star times A times U. So the only new matrix we have here is U star and otherwise it's just a standard matrix multiplication again. 
and I think there I can skip some steps and just show you the result. Indeed, we get out the ones on the diagonal as we should, and we also see we have the minus 8 from before. However, the numbers in the first row we don't know yet, it's the square root of 2 and 4 times the square root of 2. And that's it, that's the matrix R as a sure normal form. So that's the whole calculation, and you should note that the interesting and important part of the sure decomposition is that we can get a triangular matrix just by using unitary matrices. And therefore, the sure decomposition has an important application for normal matrices A. In fact, this will lead to the famous spectral theorem for normal matrices. And I can already promise, this is something we will discuss with the next videos. So I really hope I meet you there again, and have a nice day. Bye bye.